Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop, stop, stop. Copyrighted. Copyrighted content. There we go. Much better. Well, you know I had to do something for Blade Runner. Um, it's November 20th, 2019. This is when the Blade Runner events happen. This is when they start. And, uh, and so I'm going to stream a little something. Do not take shots. Do not get alcohol poisoning. But it's something that I think is about nine years old that was updated. So I'm going to use this as an excuse to talk a little bit about Blade Runner and uh, why I like it and also to check this out because someone spent a year making this apparently. Also, this is not going to work like amazingly. It's, it's going to work a little bit like shit. But I think you'll get the idea. You know, because it's old, I'm using a different version of Minecraft. Let's see. A newer version. So, that's it. Is that a cactus? Vignot, play Vangelis music. Uh, so the Vangelis music will get this video shut down. Like, completely. So I have to be very careful about that. But, um, already pretty good. I mean, I haven't seen this. So this is someone's life for like a year. Someone said my character look does not complement the theme. What, a tree? That's great. I can't even open my inventory, so th things are just totally fucked. Uh, sushi! That's what my ex-wife called me. Cold fish. Oh my god. Yeah, things are a little fucked up. That's an emerald. That sounds like my favorite, um, League of Legends character, Kremrold. I guess that's an emerald. And that's a map that I can't pick up. But, um, otherwise, pretty decent looking fake Decker apartment. Pa paper. It's- it's a unicorn. Arrow. Leather cap. Read me. Okay, if you say so. Torch, which does not work. Vinny, it's because you're in adventure mode. Should I, like, not be in adventure mode? Yeah, I don't know either. Well, I guess we'll find out. Um... I have the bullets, but not the Blade Runner gun. Torches don't work. Oh god. Oh, it's gonna be a nightmare to see things in the dark. This is a map, um, from my Bladecraft texture pack, inspired by my all-time favorite movie, Blade Runner. Go see it, seriously. There are no quests or riddles, but there's a lot to explore. I recommend you play ple uh, peaceful, but there are items, weapons, and food to find throughout the map if you want to push up the difficulty. Please don't break blocks. This map is intended as it is, and just will get behind bounds. Oh. A new life awaits you in the off-world colonies. A chance to begin again in a golden land of opportunity and adventure. 
So wait, wait, wait. It's not going to be peaceful. All right. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Again, I just needed an excuse. I was going to do the. Uh, oh God. I was even considering doing the uh, Deckard's apartment um, map again. see. Uh, but this works instead. Vinny, is Blade Runner a good movie? Should I watch it? Uh, we, I think we do this like once every couple weeks. Or once a month. Uh, I don't know if you'll like it. I like it. Some people don't have the capacity for it. Some people don't like it. Some people don't have the attention span for it. Some people think it's a bad movie. But it's got a weird cult following of idiots like myself who happen to think it's kind of a masterpiece. That said, I can acknowledge that the movie is kind of fucked up in some ways. Um, and the final cut is the best version of the film. So I'd recommend that. Her. Um, again, this was designed for an older version of Minecraft, so things are gonna be kind of... ...fucky. Noodles! Let me get no- oh, no, no, this is the, um... ...the lady that sells Deckard the alcohol. Blade Runner is critically acclaimed, my dude, says, uh, a chat member. Yeah, it is, uh, but it's still critics. There are people that don't like it that didn't like it then, that don't like it now. But... Visually, the movie probably still holds up, especially if you watch it on Blu-ray, and, um, and if you... take into account that it was made completely practically. It's just a really, really great movie, and... considering today is November... 20th... 2019, this is the last day that you could possibly say that Blade Runner takes place in the future. Even though that's no longer possible, now it's the present. It's just simply the present. Someone wrote 2046, my dude. I think you meant 2049. Like Blade Runner 2049. But you, you didn't, you got a couple years off from that. Vinny, it's going to be weird saying Blade Runner takes place in the past. Well, the weird thing about Blade Runner now is that it did get some stuff right. But the expectation of flying cars and people living off-world was kind of based on the fact that in 1982, it was only like 13 years removed since we first went to the moon. And I think we were still going to the moon as late as, um, the, the, you know, the 70s. I don't know when. I don't know when the last time we've been to the moon was. It was like 73, 74, 72. Uh... So, it, it had been 10 years since people went to the moon, so I guess the expectation was that, well, of course we're going to be... We're going to get flying cars, of course there's going to be off-world colonies. By 2019... That's like 30-something years into the future. Back to the Future 2 takes place 2015. Yeah, I feel like that's actually probably even a little bit more... Oh, there's the inventory. That feels a little bit more accurate. Even though we don't have holograms still. You become pregnant by a man who runs off with your best friend and decide to get an abortion. Now, now you want to hear the funny thing is? This past Saturday when I went to that Blade Runner event. And I got a Voight-Kampf test. Where they, they give you an empathy test to prove if you're a human or a replicant. They asked me this exact question.
You can imagine my confusion. Well, it was a question the way they they you know posed it, and there was multiple choice answers. Um, the last answer was always like, you know, piss off cop, or eat a dick, authority, whatever it was, or like beep boop, I am a robot. So it was like three decent multiple choice answers, and then the last one was always a joke, or it was always just like I am a robot, bop bop bop. I don't know why robots go bop bop bop, but that is definitely the future. Which is another thing that Blade Runner got wrong. So we don't have flying cars. We don't have, um, androids that are basically, as they call them in the movie, skin jobs. We don't have that. We do have phones. Don't you people have phones? Well, you do. And so do I. And that's the thing that makes it magical. We have good LCDs, we have LEDs, we have LSD. Uh, we've, we've got some stuff that's pretty interesting at this point in time. We've got video games that are pretty, like, Minecraft. LLCs, yeah. DLC. DMC2. We got, um, DDR. DRM, unfortunately. So we have a lot of different numbers. Um, and Atari is, is definitely not what it used to be. Even though Atari, I, is... Is that Atari system still happening? Because in the movie... Atari is still a big brand, and as Deckard's flying around, and as, a, uh, you know, you're walking through the city, and you're looking around, you see a bunch of Atari logos. And I guess it just seemed like in 1982, that Atari would be around forever. Yeah, they, they had the same Atari logo in 2049 as well. They just went with that reality. Like, that's like they... Treated it like it was an alternate reality. I want that damn gun. Some of this is vaguely Blade Runner, and some of it is very much not. <laughs> but yeah, Atari is definitely something that showed up. That, uh, there's like a, I talked about this on a previous stream, I'd imagine, but like a Blade Runner curse that people talked about. Like, most of the brands, like TWA was featured prominently in Blade Runner. So there's a lot of brands that were being promoted that were used as predictions for stuff that would still be around. That ended up totally imploding in on itself. Like, here's the tunnel. Kind of. Here's a version of the tunnel that's actually really in L.A. Vinny, are you missing the painting retextures, or are they not working? They have Coke and Atari ads. Well, you can see I've got Bladecraft here. Um, I downloaded everything that was given. This might look better with Sildur shaders. I, I thought that too. I have no options to install shaders or to put them on. Anyway, it is now officially November 21st, 2019, here in the East Coast, which means that... Um, Blade Runner officially takes place in the past now. Need Optifine for some shader mods? Yeah, no, 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 there is Optifine. Optifine is installed. It is. It's just, again, old mod. I probably didn't install it 100% correctly, but... Um, I don't know what compatibility there would be for something like this. But, yeah, it's kind of cool. I mean, this definitely has some, like, it's got those things 
these fucking wall panels. Vinny, did you select the correct launch of Minecraft? Y yes. Chat is saying you downloaded an old version without the textures. Well, well these are the textures. The paintings? Alright, well, I mean, paintings aside. Hey, if anyone gets this, like, completely working with Sildur shaders and it looks really cool, Maybe, um, send me an email or something. I thought this was a bone. Is there any spinners that I can get in? No. I guess this is the, the repair shop. God damn it, give me that. So in any case, I'll spend just a little bit more time on this. Um, just because I feel like it's something that... I do appreciate the amount of work that went into this. And it's weird because there, there's like... Blade Runner has a really dedicated group of fans. And yet... The new movie still didn't sell, like, amazingly well. There's a chance that we may never get another Blade Runner movie. Which maybe is fine. And, um, apparently there was an event in Los Angeles where a bar was set up to look like something from the movie. And they put a ton of effort into it. And it was like a November 2019 Blade Runner party. And like seven people showed up. To put that into perspective, the one I went to was infinitely shittier. And like 35 people showed up. But... You know, I guess that's life. What what part of the city is this exactly? Are these like... Like slums underneath like a bridge? Not sure what's going on here. So, yeah, it has its, it has its fans, but I've showed the movie to people that um, did not like it. So I'm well aware that it's not for everybody. And I also showed it to someone that fell asleep watching it. And there's so there's that. But I also I also showed it to people who ended up loving it. So it's definitely a hit or miss kind of thing for you know, it clicks or it doesn't. In my case, it clicked on the second viewing. The first time I watched it, I was like, yeah, Harrison Ford. I was like, Han Solo. Hang on a minute. And then I watch the movie, and, it, and like, he's really kind of boring in the movie. Not, like, it's not a bad performance. I think it's a good performance. But he's not Han Solo. Definitely not Han Solo. Um, he's basically cold fish. Ow. Imagine me dying while looking around on the Blade Runner um, mod. I, what, what? Where am I? What's going on now? Okay, never mind. The love interest is pretty forced. Well, I think it was handled poorly, but I also know that that was one of her first acting roles, and apparently the chemistry between her and Ford was uh, oil and water. So, and she kept laughing during takes, and it screwed up a lot of the, the, the love interest stuff, which ended up being a pretty core premise of the movie, which is spoilers that Blade Runner falls in love with his prey. Like, the hunter falls in love with the hunted. And he, f like, kind of, you discover throughout the movie that the replicants are probably actually more human than human, as they say. And display more humanity than the people who are all kinds of fucked up and depressed. Especially Harrison Ford, you know, because he's just, like, a mess and, like, kind of a dick. So you watch the movie, you realize, like, oh, wait a minute, the replicants are much more interesting and maybe even kind of make a point about oh, huh. about um, because they know they have a limited lifespan 
they actually want to live life more fully than a bunch of depressed assholes walking around LA. Hmm. So anyway, that's the thing that I kind of like about the movie that I don't think it has a very good story. I think it's mostly just a visual piece that does delve into some interesting like topics, but it doesn't not everyone gets it right away and not everyone sees every every um angle. But the story itself is just a dude hunting a bunch of replicants and then you know, his ex-wife calls him sushi. But it's supposed to be a noir film. Film. It's a detective noir movie set in the future. It's future noir. And it's good. And um, the gun is cool. And the visuals are cool. And the music... For me, what kept me going with this movie... Golden Sword, huh? Okay. It's like a stun baton, I guess. The, the thing that kept me going with this movie for as long as I went with it, like to give it another chance and to see it a couple more times, is because I thought the miniatures, the setting, like I wasn't overly interested in cyberpunk. I thought it was cool, but when I saw the movie the second or third time, something like completely clicked. I think it might have been the combination between Vangelis' soundtrack and the visuals. And that's kind of what got me into it as much as I got into it. And then um, watching the like four hour making of about how they made the sets, how they made the miniatures, how horrendous the set was, how everybody at one point hated Ridley Scott. The dude was just a straight up like dick while making the movie and not a private dick. And him and Harrison Ford had a lot of arguments. Like, for example, Harrison Ford is convinced that Deckard is human. Ridley Scott, who changes his mind... Th oh, interesting. Um, thinks that Deckard is a replicant. But the truth is, there's no real clear answer. Even though uh, Ridley filmed... He filmed the movie with the intent of kind of uh, throwing some clues in there, like the unicorn. That whole unicorn angle was exactly a way to say, hey, look. Oh, skull. That's not very Blade Runner-y. Um, like, hey, look. Here's a clue that um, Gaff can see into his memories. And that's the kind of stuff I like, too. Like, there's a lot of little hints and, and there's a lot of subtleties and the world building is really good. And it definitely takes a lot from Philip K. Dick's book, but it doesn't do the exact... It's like a, an adaptation that feels like its own thing, and people um, seem to either love it or hate it. And there are Philip K. Dick fans that think it just trashes the original material, which I get. Um, what else? Yeah, there's a lot of good behind-the-scenes stuff, and, uh, that's part of what makes the movie fun. Another thing that I like about Blade Runner, just purely from, like, an interest standpoint, is that you have shit like Star Trek and Star Wars that are massive. They got tons of merchandise, tons of documentaries, there's so much... Like, there's so much Star Trek, there's now so much Star Wars, there's so many action figures, so many pieces of merchandise. Blade Runner never really had that kind of fame. So while it means a lot to people, it's kind of really hard and rare to find something Blade Runner related. So when I find it, I'm excited. That's kind of a cool thing. It just feels like my thing. You know, it's... It, and, um... I like that about it. I also... I like that, um... The whole world feels, like, real. Like, there's punks... There's gunks, there's skunks, there's monks. There's a whole fuckload of everything when you're watching the movie. Let's see. I'm gonna go this way. Um, clearly I'm having trouble actually... Oh, this thing is freezing up on me. Uh, clearly I'm having trouble finding my way around. So I'm just gonna walk around aimlessly again, but with some intent this time. Um...
see, what building is this? I don't think this is the police station. I don't, I don't really know what this is. But, uh, this person built a lot of fucking apartments. Food? You would think that, like, in the world of Blade Runner, they don't have real carrots. The fuck is this a bathroom? I can't really tell. Um, just to talk for a second about 2049. I don't know if anyone here has seen it or not, but I think 2049 is equally an accomplishment. Almost, for me, even a little bit better than the original. And it does everything it should do and more, I think. I think it's great. I think Ryan Gosling is good in it, and he wears a cool jacket. And uh, that's, that's a rare fucking thing, to make a sequel to a movie like that and have it be just as good, if not better. So that's pretty fucking cool. That's what happens when you have a really, really good director who wants to make his own story and not just retread. And it's not even really a soft reboot. Some people would say that. Uh, maybe. Maybe you could consider it that. But for me, it just feels like... another look into this world... with a completely different theme. And... But similar stuff, it happens, and then there's, you know, Deckard. Um, but it's the story of Ryan Gosling. And, and, well, Kay. And I think it works, it works great. And they used miniatures, they used sets. They did all the same types of shit. Except they just made it look a little bit prettier with CG. Nexus 6. That building is really, really big. I wonder if I can get in there and go all the way to the top. No. Chat, um, I was gonna say, how do I fly, but... Okay, I'm gonna save and quit to title, um... I want to go here... How do I, like, do creative? Huh? Game mode creative? Open LAN, enable cheats. I don't know where that is again. Open LAN type. Game mode creative. You gotta be in-game, okay. I just wanna fly around for a second. Here. Escape and click op oh open to land. I see. <laughs> and then restart or no? No, it's good. Okay, so um, so no clip, please. <laughs> no clip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, okay. No clip. <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> wow. Look at all of this that I was missing. There's even a whole fucking look at look at this. Mercer? Oh, that's a cool reference. That's the the religion but only in the book. They didn't cover that in the movie. There's the Coke sign. Nexus 6 again. The Yukon. Just 
Get in there now. Finally, I can I can destroy blocks. Finally. I know I was told not to, but... Oh, definitely not supposed to be in there. This, the sound of the rain is very sporadic and very spotty. Is this the blimp? Yep, this is the blimp. It's advertising Donkey Kong. This is the apartment building where the ending takes place. I think this is where, um, J.F. Sebastian lives. So this is supposed to be like the Bradbury, I guess? No, the Yukon. Good. That's the Yukon. Try using the door? Well, what fun would that be? The only thing I really, really want right now is the gun. I just want to be able to shoot. I'm assuming the police station would have the gun. Is this the seawall? I think that's supposed to be the seawall. Vinny, you are in creative. That doesn't mean I can't shoot. Get bow and creative. Open inventory and creative. Oh. Alright, there you go. Bull. There it is. <laughs> that was underwhelming. Still very, uh, very good. Very nice work here. This is, um, good. You can do... I don't know what the hell you could do with this, but maybe you could find something to do with this. Someone somewhere probably has played on this for a while. Someone said RP? Yeah, I mean, that's how it was advertised. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there you go. Blade Runner is officially 18 minutes in the past, and... The Tyrell Pyramid is in this map, too. And it's near the Nexus 6, Nexus 6 buildings. Okay, alright, one second. Hang on a minute, I have some work to do here. I just gotta find the Tyrell Pyramid. Oh, shit. Is this...? Yo. Is this that? I guess it's maybe supposed to- yeah, it kinda is supposed to be that. I think it's supposed to be, like, small for scale purposes. Just for the- the effect of it. Um, cool though, and the Tyrell Pyramids are probably, compared to the rest of the buildings, like three times the size of all that. So yeah, this is a little small, but it's here. Um, true story, real quick, they only made one of these, and they only made, um, this side of it, I believe. And then they just composited them side to side to make it look like they were two pyramids. So they were, um, you know, miniatures. And, and, they have it. The Tyrell Pyramid is actually available to see in Queens, New York. As I've shown you many times on the stream. Why did Tyrell build pyramids anyway? I guess he fancies himself some kind of god. And there you go. Yeah, that, that'll be, um... 
Then he put TNT everywhere. It will be funny. How about this? We'll, we'll try a little bit of that TNT. Just for a second. Just for a second. How do, how do I light these? <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Try fire or redstone. I don't play Minecraft for two months and I forget everything. Um, flint and steel is just a lighter now. That was kind of okay. It wasn't like haha the big funny. This will be. You like how I've tried to end this stream like three times by now? End it with a bang. Alright. Well, Tyrell Corporation needs to have this building demolished anyway. And that was an abrupt end to the music. That didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to, by any means. It just became fireworks. Okay. We're done. We're done. Except... except one thing. Someone wanted me to blow up this. Goddamn, the movement speed. I like how most of my Minecraft streams that aren't my own world end up devolving into, let's blow everything up. This, this is only mildly entertaining at this point. I tried my best, everybody. And as um, Ridley Scott's other character once said, Are you not entertained? Alright, so that's Blade Runner. I, again, I would recommend checking it out. It's two movies. That's it. It's not a huge investment. You might like it, you might not, but it's, you know... It's a good movie. I like it. And people that I've showed the movie to either fall asleep or love it. Flip a coin. All right, this is the art for the night. So thank you for watching the stream tonight. This is last night's art and tonight's art. All together now.
Okay. Um, whoever said there were 15 pieces last night, I don't think they were quite... So if there was 10 last night and then just a couple today, it's not too bad. This is definitely doable. Um, Burn Nurn made this. Oh, they, yeah, that was uh, Sin City who said that it was 10. So, yeah, it's like probably about 15 now in total. Burn Nerd made this. They grew up so fast. Vinny playing Call of Duty. What is it me or V Dub that's growing up fast, or is it Call of Duty that's growing up fast? Haven't quite figured that part out. Here's one from a non-505. This is Mike and I with Red Vox. Pretty cool. The basic details, but it works. Here's one from Sin City. Vincent's Ghost Free Travel Agency. Now listen, is this a reference that I'm not remembering? And does he time travel? Yes, that's a good question. Yes, it is. There was art where Daisy and Luigi were talking. You made the bit on the first stream. You had a joke about Luigi coming in a flower. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I didn't know. They were collecting a sample of Luigi's DNA from the flower. You made a joke that Daisy didn't go with Luigi and opted to find her own hotel. Okay, well, that's a better explanation. Nox Materi made this. <laughs> Nox Materi made this. That's a cool Vine Sauce logo. It looks like an ambigram, too. Same upside down as round, round side up. Sleep! Continue. This one's from Twilight Saber. That's a nice shroom. Autumn theme, too. That's pretty cool. Definitely gonna enjoy that one. For, uh, autumn time. Sorry, my brain isn't working. It's fine. Here's one from Glitch R. This is art for, um, or Glitcher. It's pronounced Glitcher, sorry. I see some lyrics that are, um, from what, uh, Why Can't This Be Easy? I forgot the name of my own song, Why Can't This Be Easy? But yeah, that's cool. This will be a good BRB to use. This one's from Death Metal Alley. Why, you know, it's just, this is kind of what life is now. There's just a lot of Kirsby's. I said new Kirby. Hey everybody, this is Tommy with Joe. She should introduce you to the new Kirby. No, I don't know. I, I, if there's a context, I don't remember or know, but it, it's fine. Here's one from Druid Punk. Here's an... Wow. Okay. That is a meat. That is a very meaty meat. Very wrinkly meat. Burnt and meaty and crusty meat. Uh, 
Nice work. Here's one from C Daisy X, and it is me with a poncho and a lightsaber. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, that's nice work. I like the scoot up there and the meat, of course. Here's one from Rabid Rodent. Did they ever find a way to make... Like... Castlevania Circle of the Moon has a great soundtrack, but there is a thin hiss, and it's that GBA sound processing. Is there a, um... Like, is there a fucking version of this song that doesn't have the GBA crust like they did with Mother 3. Only if the composer released the masters on YouTube. Oh, okay. Anyway, this is very accurate. Uh, and last night, this was definitely what happened. I went up until about 4.20 a.m. playing Legend of Bumbo, and it was a goddamn nightmare. I slept very well last night, though, by the way. I was very tired. But it worked out. Okay, from Cheesy Draws. It's, um, I'm just reading it. Otherwise, the exact same guy. Yeah, I guess. It, it's, uh... It's getting meta yet again, and it's like... Well, I at least got a devil's haircut in my mind. That's a good song. Yeah. Someone in chat said, a corpse. I feel like a corpse at the moment. No, I don't think it's quite Vlinny. Anyway, this one's from Hadididi. I think I finally started saying that right. And... Peace and love. Oh god. Oh god, this next one. From Golden Newt. Make the eyes bigger. <laughs> it's George Lucas in a bathrobe showing up... ...at the studio... ...giving pointers. Trying to tell them how to develop the game. I didn't need to say why are they so like pepperoni-ish? Oh god. Next, Lara Ravencroft made this. Here's another BRB. It's a trash yacht will be our oh bin. Bin yacht. Bin yacht will be our B. I get it. That's good. <laughs> I'll use that. This one's from Bobber WCC. This is your brain on vine sauce. God. Any questions? The, for those that don't know, and I really can't believe that this commercial is as old as it is. Does anyone not know what the reference is? I'm just wondering. Did they do reruns? This was like a really, really famous ad. Um, so there's a bunch of people in chat. I, not that I would expect everyone to know about it, but it just became like kind of a meme. And it was such a failed... program. The whole D.A.R.E. program. But uh, it was... they cracked an egg. It was an egg, and it said, this is your brain. And then the dude cracks the egg over a pan and starts frying the egg. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? And that was literally it. And that commercial was fucking everywhere, and they played it all the time, and it became a massive meme for its time. And, uh... It didn't really work on anyone, I don't think. And this one's from Hyper Mega. Great art, by the way. Good reference. There's a 2016 version, and a 1997 version. It seems like they revive that every 20 years. 87, well, no, to 97, that's 10. And then 20 years in between 97 and 2016. So Hyper Mega made this. 
I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> but, yeah, long neck. Good. Done. Art. Good. Thank you, everybody. I'm tired. I'm gonna go to bed. So, thanks for watching. And I hope, um, hope you had a good time on some level. I will be around tomorrow, and we will play more video games. Maybe I'll try to finish Luigi's Mansion tomorrow. So, good times, good games. And, uh, see you then. So watch some other streamers. Twitch.tv slash team slash vinesauce, vinesauce.com, or wait here for the auto host. Of course, that will take you to my mods, my friends, and other good lads. Good people that I think you might enjoy. Their streams are good. Throw them a follow. I'm good. I, I got plenty of love. I got plenty of support. You can go and support someone else now if you want. I appreciate it, though. And now I go. Goodbye. That was me in the spinner, flying high above the Los Angeles skyline. It was dirty. It was dusty. I was an ex-cop. There I am, flying in the distance towards the Tyrell Pyramids. That's my eye. My ex-wife used to like that eye. She used to call me fish, cold fish, sushi in fact. There I am, flying closer to the pyramid, preparing to land. And that's an explosion. The pyramid was a tall drink of water. Taller than any building. Hey, who's that guy? That's not me. That wasn't me.